Today I will be talking about uh, two-in-one computers and how indie games can utilize them. And uh, the way I'm going to structure the talk is first uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about our game, uh, which is called Luminosity, um, which uh, is a, it's a fun point that we actually created the game first without any intentions of uh, having anything to do with two-in-one computers. But uh, afterwards, we uh, worked together with Intel to, to bring support. And this is an ongoing thing. So the game is released, but it doesn't yet have uh, the latest patch, which introduces support and, and some other cool features that I'll be going over. So the red thread of the talk will be a sort of our experience um, and how it's been to, to implement this um, and why we believe that more game developers should consider this. Uh, so first, uh, the first thing I'll be talking about is our game, what it's about, uh, because it becomes relevant later on when uh, talking about like decisions and, and cool features. Um, after that, uh, I'll also talk a little bit about what's a two-in-one computer. They've been mentioned a few times in the talks already, which is great. And I think most people have seen or have a vague idea of uh, what uh, two-in-one computer is. They've, recent years, it's becoming more and more popular, so, uh, yeah. Uh, and then I'll talk a little bit about uh, what we've actually done and how it's been. And why I think it's a, an important thing to, to have this in uh, consideration. So, to begin, what's Luminosity? Well, it's an arcade game. Uh, it's a score attack game. So, uh, the main focus of the game is trying to beat your own high score. And it, it's on Steam, so we also have uh, global leaderboards uh, where you can you know, compete against the world or you can compete against your friends, which is even more fun. Um, it's also fairly simple uh, to get into. It's, it's not a complicated game. It's a little bit different, which is why I want to go over a few things. So I have a, this is not in-game footage. Um, I'll just go over the very basic mechanic, and then I'll show the trailer, and that should be about it. Um, so you control a player ship. Uh, it's a spaceship. It has a space theme. Um, but the game has a little bit of a different twist than most of uh, these kind of games, in the sense that the enemy drones, you're not actually trying to shoot them uh, to destroy them. Uh, you're actually trying to do the opposite. Uh, because when you shoot, a uh, laser comes out from both ends, and the objective is to try to avoid all of the enemies. So it's a bit of a puzzle game in that sense. And there's a bunch of different enemies, and they do a bunch of different things and behave differently. Um, so yeah, you, you try to basically divide the map, and when you section off places, you conquer that place and you get points. And the basic uh, goal of the game is to conquer a certain percentage that rises and gets higher and higher. So once you get um, like 60% of the map, you win that level. Um, so with that in mind, I just want to show you our trailer for the game. So you can see some actual in-game footage. Let's see if that works. I don't know if we have sound, but that's not too important. Ah, there we go. It's a lot cooler with sound, so. So yeah, that's some in-game footage, just so you sort of get an idea of, uh, let's see if I can get my PowerPoint back. Uh, 
Yeah, there we go. So yeah, that's uh, what the game is, um, and you know, it's it's been out for a while on Steam, and um, yeah, moving on to what's a two-in-one computer. Um, they look and perform just like normal laptops. Um, they have, you know, uh, you know, standard laptop performance. Uh, they have uh, usually quite big screens, uh, run normal Windows OS. Uh, but the big, you know, differentiating thing is that they have touch screens. And the reason it's called two-in-one is because you can usually convert them to a tablet either by, uh, like in this example, uh, rotating the laptop um, to basically fold over to serve as a laptop, or in some other cases where you can literally just detach the screen. Um, and there's, the recent years, there's been quite a lot of uh, new uh, two-in-one computers releasing, like you can see on 2014, around 70, and coming this year is even more. So they're getting more and more usual, um, and like, Personally, I don't think that, like, in a few years we might not be talking about two-in-one computers because a laptop will just have a touch, you know. Um, so it, it's becoming a lot more standard, so to speak. Um, there's also uh, all-in-one computers, which is sort of a bigger version of a two-in-one computer. They're sort of the desktop version, so, um, you know, you have a bigger screen. They also have battery, so you can, they're portable. Uh, and the really cool thing here, in my opinion, is that especially on the, the, the same thing applies to two-in-one computers, but especially on, on the, on the um, all-in-one computers, is that they are designed for multi-users. Um, so, for example, myself, who loves board games, uh, this is a pretty exi exciting thing because now you'll be able to make, you know, uh, digital board games, which you can just lay out on the table and play face to face. And it was actually this image that gave me an idea that I will talk about a bit later in what we've actually done with Luminosity to sort of try to get this, this thing. Um, so yeah, that's one of the of things in my opinion and it it's it has a little bit it's almost like the next step from like consoles you know like if you play pc games you're you know playing over net and you're not really face to face with consoles you're sitting on a couch you know it's it's more social you're next to your friends you know but with this you can literally be you know face to face like a board game you know so it's it's even more intimate in a way um so why, why is it important to, to care about two-in-one computers? Well, I think it's a great way to differentiate your game, to, to sort of anticipate how laptops are evolving, um, because not only do you compete with games in terms of sales, like somebody has to buy your game over thousands of other games, like for example here on on Steam, which is a fairly, you know, uh, regulated market, like you can't just instantly release your game there. Um, they still have like 300 games per month it releases, and it's even worse on on uh, apps, uh, app stores and such. But the main thing to consider also is that a lot of gamers they have a lot of games, so um, you're not just competing with uh, potential customers, you're also competing of potential gameplay time. Uh, we've noticed a huge difference in that when there's a lot of people playing our game, especially on places like Steam that has some kind of social components, um, it, it very much matches our sale curves. So when a lot of people play, uh, it, it helps drive sales. Uh, personally, for example, it happens quite frequently, which is one of the most frequent ways that I actually get games is that I'll just see one of my friends playing a game I've never heard. And then I'm wondering why he's playing that and check the game out. Um, so, let's see. 
if you uh, if you make your game for uh, two in one computers, which is like I said, I believe they they are getting more and more popular, and I think that you know uh, if not full tablet features, at least most laptops will have a touch screen because why not you know um, and when if you have uh, if your game has two in one support um, and you um, uh, you know you, someone's bought your game on Steam the second they feel like going and sitting in their couch they'll bring the tablet with them uh, and leave the keyboard or fold it and all of a sudden you're no longer competing with hundreds or 500 uh, other games for their attention you're now all of a sudden competing with almost no one which means that like if they want to play a game and your game has touch support as well that's that's great um, like you saw on the trailer this is how luminosity looks uh, when you play normally on on tablet mode um, the main important thing is the middle screen there, which is the like game area. And when we added the support for touch, uh, we also changed the UI slightly. So now we get these touch buttons down here. We move the screen up a little bit um, with the information. Um, and because that's multi-touch, you know, you can swipe with your finger to move the player ship and then you have buttons to rotate and buttons to shoot and also a use button. There's an in-game shop here as well that you can tap to, to buy certain power-ups and stuff. So that was a fairly like convenient way of getting it to work uh, with the, the game. So and this is at the moment you know fully functioning so um, you can basically bring your tablet into your couch or something and uh, continue playing Luminosity seamlessly because the, the uh, computer detects the swap and changes it uh, without any need for going into settings or something like that. But we also wanted to implement something that um, was uh, like special and unique uh, for the touch. So we didn't just want to make it compatible. Uh, we also wanted to add something cool. Uh, and we got the idea from the whole like board game perspective and thought like, how can you make Luminosity a board game? And this was like the first iteration of how to do that, which was basically copy uh, the exact screen, flip it over, and two players can play face to face and compete on who beats the level first. And whoever does that would get a point, and so on. But the problem with just uh, having this approach, which we noticed was that, well, it, it looks a bit messy. Um, and also, uh, another concern is that uh, because now you need to fit more stuff in the same size screen, because the screen doesn't get bigger, um, the actual playing field needs to get a little bit smaller, which was not optimal. Um, this is the design that we follow now, which is has basically stripped out most of the stuff on the sides, uh, and basically just focuses on making it as clean as possible, uh, without compromising on on in-game features. Uh, this is what we're working on currently. That's why I don't have any fancy in-game screens. This is just uh, the idea, but we've gotten fairly far on it, and it's it's but it's not playable yet. Um, but yeah, so this uh, basically allows you to to uh, take the competitiveness of the the score attack game to the next level, basically, because now you're not just competing for points on a leaderboard you're actually sitting you know face to face with somebody and uh, uh, trying to beat them uh, 
And the thing to, that I think is great uh, is that a lot of times when there comes new technology, uh, there's a bit of a rough start. You, know, you have to figure out how to do stuff. And, and a lot of times, uh, it doesn't work that well. Like You can think of like the first 3D games, just something as simple as how to make proper controllers. Controls uh, weren't that obvious back then. But with two in one computers, you have the advantage of being able to uh, take a peek at the tablets and uh, to some degree also phones. Uh, because they already have uh, touch screens and only touch screens and have had to basically come up with uh, different ways of uh, um, moving and uh, input and, and stuff like that. And you know, any game uh, almost. Uh, exists on on iPads or or Android phones and, and such and you know there's a multiple uh, there's a, there's a lot of different um, uh, input systems you know with like virtual joysticks and, and I mean there's even 3D games where you know shooter games and stuff um, and it's not just that you now make a tablet game because you also have uh, the pos like you have fewer limits, uh, like phones and, and tablets, although they're getting better and getting bigger screens and stuff, um, they still have performance uh, issues, like compared to a, a desktop uh, computer or a laptop. Um, and generally speaking, they also have smaller screens. Um, so yeah, you, you basically get all the good stuff from from tablets and such, but without the, the bad part, so to speak. Um, so yeah. Um, a little bit about like how difficult it is to, to implement to email support. Um, I, as I mentioned before, we actually released Luminosity without um, you know, without having any two-in-one support, it wasn't on our agenda or it wasn't planned or anything. So we designed the game without that in consideration. Um, so that just shows that if you have, like, this doesn't necessarily mean that uh, you have to wait for your next game. You can look at your game and think, what what could I do uh, with touch? Could Could my game run with touch? Could I make maybe a special mode that that only touch uh, would allow for? Um, as for technical stuff, I won't get too much into detail, but uh, I can say that a few great things is that a lot of we use um, uh, a framework called Love. Uh, it's Lua based, uh, although it's it's built on C plus um, plus. It, uh, because our framework has support for um, phones and, and uh, tablets, um, it, it made it a lot easier for us to basically use that as a starting point. We already had a bunch of code that we could work with. And really the only thing that wasn't there at all was the, the slate uh, mode thing, where like you have to get your program to understand that this is a two-in-one computer and that now it's a laptop, now it's a tablet, and so on. Um, and it's, um, it, I can't speak for like uh, too much for like other um, like frameworks or such, but if you are able to, to mess with the source code and stuff like that, then it shouldn't really be that hard. Like the, the slate changing and stuff isn't all that that advanced, like the the main thing is 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 getting multi-touch to work, and most likely, like most of the modern, uh, most used frameworks and such, already have uh, partial or full support for mobiles and tablets. Um, another small thing that I think is worth mentioning is if you do make uh, two in one uh, support for your game. Um, an interesting thing that I 
figured out was that sometimes you, you want to use touch because some people just find touch more intuitive, but you don't want to detach it from the um, base. So you want to use the base as sort of a, a way to hold it in place. So a recommendation would be to also have, um, have the possibility of changing slate without actually doing it. So if you would touch the screen, the, the game would then recognize that, oh yeah, he wants to use touch and change accordingly. And then it's quite simple to just, the second the player touches a key or uses the mouse, you just swap it back because, oh, now he's wanting to use that instead. Um, which we've done, and it's actually quite nice. Um, yeah, that's about what I have to say. So thanks for listening.